Bon après-midi, messieurs dames. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do the rest of this in English because my French vocabulary is more focused around food and vacations than HPC. <laughs> Um, if this talk seems a little familiar from Corey's, we've got a bit of shared material, so we'll get going. The goal of this is just to persuade you, really, that luster is a good choice for Flash. <laughs> okay, sorry, thank you. So, sorry, I didn't mean to repeat that. The goal of this is to persuade you that luster is a good choice as you move to either integrating Flash into your HPC file systems or as you move to that as primary. So. Flash is different, and this is sort of old news to all of us, but it's got different pros and cons than spinning disk. It's got greater bandwidth and lower latency, but much lower capacity. There are problems with lifetime and endurance. Um, there are sort of block size issues. Flash doesn't necessarily actually have a native 4K block size. Um, so sometimes 128, other things like that. Um, and then you have the more complicated issues around trim and things like that, which I'm not going to get into but all of them make Flash a little more complicated to own in some ways than spinning disk. They have implications for file systems. Those are, they're important, but it kind of depends what you mean by file systems. Luster is a lot of things. It's the client stack, it's the network stack, and it's an on-disk file system. But, and also, of course, it kind of includes the Linux kernel block IO subsystem. Well, a lot of work has been done in ext4 and in especially in the block io subsystem of the linux kernel to improve things for flash but it's been done we get it for free so additionally some of the issues around life cycle stuff for flash are much better because the flash is better and controllers have improved versus a few years ago so really for luster flash is just another block device fast it's fast fast is great um, you get to move a lot of data in and out of flash disks quickly, but Luster already moves a lot of data. We do high bandwidth OSTs. The, the cluster store, for example, that'll move sort of five to eight gigabytes per second in the more recent models in and out of one OST because it's a large set of disks and even larger things being built with ZFS. And it turns out that the same approach generally works well um, in my experience looking at what's available today, servers are more often limited by network bandwidth rather than disk bandwidth. You can, especially with Flash, you can stack more bandwidth inside an enclosure than you can get out over the network. Hence a lot of the interest in multi-rail. So just a little bit more about that. Luster is really good at extracting pretty much all of the bandwidth from high-speed flash arrays. And some simple testing with just LVM, no complicated RAID, and LDISC FS, we get greater than 95% of raw performance. Um, the folks over at Intel keep telling us that ZFS on flash is, is great, so I, I, I trust them. The issues here are really more end up being around building hardware that can move enough data. If you take a current disk array set up and you just stack it full of flash, you'll never get the bandwidth in and out at least not with current stuff. So then what about latency, the other big thing with Flash? So Flash has much better latency for small I.O. than spinning disks do. But of course, when we get into the realm of large I.O., we don't talk about latency, we worry about bandwidth instead. The latency is about 100 times better than for spinning disk. This is really good for small random I.O. It's good for chatty workloads, which is to say workloads that maybe write and read the same data repeatedly from different places, which is kind of a suboptimal pattern, but some workloads do it. Big data jobs are the example everyone keeps citing. Luster is not great at exposing flash latency. It's kind of mediocre. Um, a little testing on the Cray network to um, flash that's also on the Cray network shows 500 microseconds of latency to do a 4K read. Um, only 80 micros microseconds of that is the flash. And the network latency is kind of marginal. It's one in that calculation. It's maybe one to five microseconds. Depends on a few things. But the point is, it's not really the issue. Most of your time is spent in software. But when you talk about latency, again, it's really only relevant for small I.O. And small I.O. is, of course, absolutely terrible on spinning disk. But it's still kind of bad on flash. Everybody advertises, well, we can do so many IOPS at 4K. What they don't mention is when you multiply those numbers together, suddenly that's a third of the top end bandwidth your flash reports. You've got your flash that can do five gigabytes a second or whatever of reads. Well, if you actually do 4K reads, you'll notice that 
times the IOPS, you're getting two gigabytes a second or something. So it's not great. The other thing is that if you actually do small I/O over your network, that creates a huge amount of network traffic, which can cause various problems. And so the classic solution that's been in place for all decades now for, with spinning disks is don't do small I/O. We do that by using the page cache. So sequential small I/O doesn't have to be small to disk or over the network. That means for reads, you do read ahead, and for writes, you do write aggregation, sometimes called write behind. So Lustre just doesn't do small I.O. down to the disk unless it's forced, which would be direct I.O., small random reads, or some kinds of conflicting I.O. So and this works well for Flash. Batching up I.O. to larger chunks is a good solution for Flash, just like for spinning disk. Um, the other way that people have suggested to me when I started looking into this to deal with it is oh, do direct I.O. The latency is lower. Well, yeah, you're still usually better off letting the page cache batch your I.O. up, except for random reads, which we'll get to a little more later. So small I.O., though, the really small stuff is still tough. So we'll talk a little bit about some work that Cray is doing to improve that. Um, if you have really small I.O., the software overhead is very painful. So. Um, if you're doing 8-byte reads, for example, prior to some recent changes, you'd only get maybe a low single-digit megabytes per second. Um, so Intel has done some work in that area to optimize luster, reduce the overhead, um, fast reads. That was about a 10x improvement for the smallest reads and um, still uh, like a 2 or 3x improvement even at uh, a few hundred kilobytes. So. Um, this is sort of more of an advertisement for my developer's day talk, but uh, I've got some work around tiny writes to improve the write speed for very small writes, and then um, improving the network behavior for small I.O., and uh, something called write containers, which is actually not my work. It's another idea out of Intel from Jin Chang Shong, who asked me to talk about it because he wants volunteers to work on it. Um, but it's further work to reduce the overhead of small I.O. There's Again, right now, if you do, for example, writing at eight bytes per um, it, write eight bytes per I/O, you get extremely poor performance, um, uh, maybe a megabyte per second. And I should say this is the reason this is in the talk is because when people talk about flash, they want small I/O to work well. So, but so sort of that's small I/O. But moving back to latency. Latency does matter, and people are very excited about it. And everybody, the, a lot of the current chatter is about persistent memory tech. Um, there's a lot of investment in this area as Intel's persistent memory technology actually goes from theory to something you can buy, and increasingly something you can buy in large amounts. So there's some big projects worked on unlocking that. And that, again, that's all about latency. And so flash latency is 100 times better in spinning disk. And as I said before, Lustre can't fully expose that, so shouldn't we be concerned about that? Um, but yes, but, but no. So we talk about latency realms, something that's going to be very familiar to people who watched the Deos talks for the last few years. You've got your spinning disk, about 10 milliseconds to do an I.O. Again, these are round numbers. Someone from our new cluster store division complained to me that it's really more like 7 milliseconds on the recent disks, and I pointed out that 10 is fine for this purpose. Um, for your parallel file system, you're at maybe 500 to 700 microseconds, which is, so that's roughly, you know, you've got a, a, hundred, a factor of 100 in there, well, more like a factor of 10, actually, I'm sorry. And then with flash, you do have a full factor of 100. Flash I.O. latencies are, broadly speaking, 100 microseconds. And then the new persistent memory tech, at least they tell us soon, we'll be able to do a single microsecond for small I.O. And then just for reference, um, a one-sided MPI communication on the Cray Aries network takes a little under a microsecond. And then a thousand CPU cycles off of a modern CPU is 0.25 microseconds. So I just want to call attention to the fact that we've got um, 10 to the fourth is the factor between the spinning disk and say the, and the single microsecond. So that's um, 10,000 times. So if we look at sort of the latency the different areas of latency you've got on the on the, on your left up there, you've got spinning disk latency. So that the size of that pi is 10 milliseconds. So if you're doing I/O to spinning disk, 94% of your time this is just roughly 90 something percent of your time is spent waiting for the disk. Then if you move and so only maybe five to 10% is spent 
in Lustre itself. So Lustre's latency isn't important. Then if we start looking at Flash, now Flash is the green there, and this one is a tenth of the size of the previous one. So we're looking at one millisecond. So your sort of your traditional parallel file system like Lustre is now say 70 to 80% of the time you spend doing I.O. is spent in software there. So that, that, that hurts a little. But again, notice that the total time spent is, you know, total time is still 10 times less. So, and then if you look at, you've got something like a latency optimized PFS, like it's sort of a simplified I.O. forwarder type thing. Um, they can be in the 100 to 200 microsecond range, but that's still a POSIX file system. So. Then if we look at sort of just another in-between here, if we look at what if we use only, it's just a graph with only the latency optimized parallel file system, which is again, sort of a mixture of real data and guesses at how tightly you could implement a POSIX file system. You'll see you spend still 60% of your time there and 40% in flash, and that's fine. It's an improvement on Lustre, but it's not massively better, and you do lose some things with the simplified POSIX file system. But the real point of these two slides is the next one, which is, so we've got 250 microseconds on the left and 2.5 microseconds on the right, which is a general observation about the latency of persistent memory. Um, it, it's another 100 times lower. So for example, your, your latency optimized parallel file system is order of 100 microseconds, broadly speaking and your persistent memory is one microsecond. It's a completely, it's completely wrong scale. And that's just a little bit, just lead into the difficulties of doing POSIX with a persistent memory type environment. So all of this has been reflected in application design. Um, doing MPI communication between nodes and computes, sort of broadly comparable, we've gotten used to it. And I, then IO is many times slower, specifically 10,000 times slower. So the application model everyone uses is you interleave your compute and your communication, but you avoid I.O. as much as possible. You do it all at the beginning or all at the end or in large chunks in the middle. So application sort of computes, message passing, compute, message passing, and then because you have to, you go do as much I.O. as you can all at once, and then you go back to your normal workflow. So then talking about sort of medium latency things. So we're out of the world of spinning disk and we're in flash. So now maybe 500 microseconds for luster and flash, just as an estimate. And then that's 20 times, 10 to 20 times better than spinning disk and luster. So you really do get a lot of benefit from luster and flash. It's not all the possible benefit, but you do get a lot. So it's you would be best advised to avoid doing your purely latency sensitive workloads on a parallel file system. But if you're going to do it, fly, but if you're going to do it anyway, you'll be much happier with flash in your Lustre file system than with spinning disks. But on the other hand, is that worth redesigning for? We aren't fully unlocking the latency of flash. It's a hundred times better than, than your spinning disk based parallel file systems. So, yeah, 100 microseconds, but that's 100 times slower than, MP, than an MPI communication. And so it's still really not practical to interleave with computing communication. It's still a pretty long delay if you end up trying to stick I.O. to flash into your compute communicate style application, you end up with some very long delays. It's probably not compelling. We've had flash for a few years and nobody seems to be rewriting applications for it. And I think this is your answer why. Now, persistent memory, is different with a, with a single microsecond scale latency. Suddenly doing compute message passing storage, all kind of broadly in the same time frame, And so you start looking at doing something different there. And that's the point. Persistent memory is very different and it will enable new styles of application, a possibly instant checkpoint, things like that. All sorts of interesting ideas, a lot of which are still very much on the drawing board. And POSIX compliance there is impossible. You have one microsecond. There's no way to get consistency in a distributed file system in a single microsecond. It's just impossible. So Lustre will never really be the enabling tech in the persistent, persistent memory world. So you've got projects like Intel's DOSM. But Lustre seems to be good enough for Flash. So it's 
flash latency just isn't low enough to justify a redesign. And so, sort of got our silly quote, but the future is seldom the same as the past. But seldom, but not always. Mm. Luster is still moving forward. It's still the future, as you go to flash as primary, you're gonna be very happy, it'll get your bandwidth through, it'll do well enough with your small IO and your latency sensitive workloads. And as we move to persistent memory, whenever that stuff finally is available in terabyte quantities for cheaper than hard disks or whatever it is that the marketing people are selling it at, um, then we will need something new. And maybe Lustre can be part of your stack then, but Lustre can do flash and can't do persistent memory. And since we are here today in the world of flash for the next few years, we should be happy with Lustre and flash. Thank you for your attention. Question. Patrick, uh, you say about uh, random EO load, which sometimes is generated in the UK. Did its uh, workload generate for a single file in time, or it is for different files in the same time? Sure. Um, I, I tried both um, many files and single file. Um, many file works better than single file. Some of the issues that you highlighted in the, some of the work that I've seen recently were related to single file stuff, server side issues. Uh, I ask about different Last uh, protocol have uh, an ability to send and update this for more than <coughs> one object in same time. So... To send what again? I'm sorry. Uh, currently, uh, uh, last client send and update this from one OST object in one time. Mm. But wire protocol have the ability to the... So, so number of objects in on time. So if client generated a random EO for different files, it have an ability to pack in a single RPC and then pack on OST. That so it, 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 it will be safe for latency. That is a very interesting idea. Um, it's actually related to uh, Lustre can aggregate writes to the same file at the network layer even when they aren't aggregatable at the disk layer. So for example, small random writes can go on the network as a single I.O. This was actually very important, some of our benchmarking, because if you really do throw, say, 4K over the network, you can end up kind of swamping your network. And we found in some comparison benchmarks that the ability of Lustre to take 4K I.O. spread out through a file and send large RPCs, even though they couldn't combine them at the end on the disk, was very important in getting good performance. Okay, well, thank you, Patrick. Thank you.